Hi, everyone. It's Fridays with Sandy. I'm Sandy. Our beloved uh, leader, John Byrne, is not here. And so it's just me and our guest, Jeremy Tan. Jeremy, you want to say hi to everybody? Hey, guys. And lovely to finally be on this podcast show with you, Sandy. Looking forward to it. Uh, you're welcome and thank you. Jeremy wants a mock interview. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, and uh, Jeremy, just we're, we're going to unfold Jeremy's life uh, through the course of the interview. What we've got here in terms of the basics is a 3.7 uh, in an engineering, uh, uh, 3.7 from the University of Auckland uh, that's in New Zealand and a 710 GMAT. Okay, w what's the tough love that I gave you, Jeremy? Look, you said 710, 730, big difference. U.S. colleges yeah, in I'm particular. I'm sticking with that. People, every, everyone will deny that, including Harvard. They will deny it. Uh, well, th they will really deny it. D. Leopold, the beloved D. Leopold, who used to be the director of admissions, said that Harvard doesn't care what your GMAT score is as long as it begins with a seven. I don't believe that. I believe the difference between a 710 and a 730 is critical. And I believe it's worth trying to get a 730, even if you have to take the test one more time, two more times, or even three more times. Just my own belief. Other people can write in and tell me what they think. Yeah, okay. fully agree. Good. Uh, Jeremy, uh, very often the first question on an HBS interview is, uh, ha, uh, suppose we're going around the room the first day of class and people are introducing themselves in, you know, 20 or 30 seconds, which is a long time uh, given the circumstances. How, how would you introduce yourself? Probably along the lines of, hey guys, uh, Jeremy, civil engineer based out of um, Australia. Born in Malaysia, grew up in New Zealand. Very excited to, to working with all of you in the coming two years. And looking forward to gaining insights from your own experiences and for me to share some of my own. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. They, they don't want to know that. What, your classmates want to know what your name is, your full name, wh 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 where you went to college, the names of your employers, and how, and through that information, how you can help them. This is critical. Uh, so with that in mind, let's try it again. Got it. Um, hey all, uh, this is Jeremy Tan, graduated from the University of Auckland with both bachelor's and master's, been working with both WSP Global and ACOM for the past six years. I've got lots of civil engineering experience and project management experience as well, and looking forward to bring this to the classroom and share some of my insights. Yeah, that's too, that's too fast and too rote. You got to slow it down and make it personal. Hi, everybody. My name is Jeremy Tan. Uh, I, I was born in Malaysia, but grew up in New Zealand. Uh, I, I went to high school and college in New Zealand, whatever the, ac you know, the accurate version of this, uh, uh, at the University of uh, Auckland. And I've got a master's degree. My first job after college was for ACOM which is a uh, actually quite large Fortune 500, uh, uh, whatever they are. I, I was a geotechnical engineer. Uh, I stayed there for three and a half years. And then I had a, the same job at another outfit called Babbage Consultants. And I'm currently working at WSP Global in Sydney, which is a blah, blah. Yeah. How much trumpet blowing do I do? Like, I don't want to, I don't want to seem too much of a braggart in front of my new classmates, you know, like, do I Yeah, list no Trump, no, no, no selling. Did I, my version was, had the right tone, if I must say yeah. so myself. I wasn't selling anything. I was just given the fact, right? Yeah. Very often the first interview question is, uh, 
Hey, hey, hi, hi, Jeremy. What, what are you? Could you tell me what you're doing now and what WSP Global is? So what I'm doing now, I'm a um, my my official role is a senior geotechnical engineer, but I am leading some projects in in the geotechnical space. So this includes um, a, a, a station where we're, we're constructing a new station as part for as part of the Sydney Metro, and the work I do there requires liaising with other departments and in the the structural. Okay, engineers. let me get this clear. WSP Global, you're like a civil engineering firm, right? That's the word you got to use. That's something everybody understands. Civil engineer. Okay. Civil engineering. You go, yeah, I got it. The guy's a civil engineer. So you go, hi, everybody. Uh, you know, uh, right now I'm working for WSP Global in Sydney. It's one of the biggest civil engineering firms in Australia. And right now I'm on an interesting project. We're expanding the Sydney Metro. What if I want to sound a little bit more special, you know, civil engineers we've got with uh, like millions of us out there, you know, there's, there's geotechnical engineering uh, sort of, you know, distinguishing me a little bit or should I just sure. blend in? I work for a civil engineering and I've got a specialty in geotechnical engineering, which is what? Uh, engineering related to both soil and rock. So anytime, you know, the other engineers or other project managers interfere with uh, or, or or have projects which intersect with the ground. That's where I step in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be honest, nobody cares about that. You're still a civil engineer, like you haven't. That's what people think civil engineers do. Yeah, yeah. If it, if it comes up as part of an answer, it's one thing. So let's start over again. Hey, Jeremy, how are you? Could you tell me what WSP Global is and what you're doing now? WSP Global, is, uh, as the name suggests, a global engineering company. We've got... Um, uh, the name seven... doesn't suggest that. Oh, okay. I was thinking more of the global part, but okay. WSP Global is a global engineering and design company focusing on management and engineering design services in the built and natural environment. So we've got approximately $7 billion turnover and more than 50,000 employees across 40 countries. Yeah, that's a little better, but it's still the beginning was a little rough. We're, mm. we're a big civil engineering firm. We're based in Sydney, Australia. We're one of the biggest civil engineering firms in Australia. You know, the headcount is this, uh, the turnover is this. Yeah. How, it's based how more. hard is that? Yeah, probably got to memorize that line and walk in with a boilerplate answer then, eh? Well, you, you can memorize it, but don't sound scripted, although. This is one area where you can sound a little bit scripted because you're just pushing out facts. Mm. Should I highlight the fact that it's more of a Canadian company with big roots in North America? You could say it's a Canadian-based company. Yeah. If that's accurate. Yeah, headquarters in Canada. It's on the uh, Toronto Stock, Stock Exchange as well. That's on your resume. Okay. TSE listed or something. Okay, cool. Slide that in. Just for your next life. They've already uh, swallowed it. Yep. But in terms of introducing yourself, you know, it's like, hi, everybody. My name is Jeremy Tan. Uh, you know, I was, I, I, I grew up in uh, New Zealand. I went to school wherever I went to school. It, right now, I'm working for WSP Global. It's a very, it's, it's one of the world's biggest civil engineering firms. It's based in Canada. It's actually listed on the Canadian exchange. I'm, a, I'm, I'm what's called a geotechnical engineer. And what that means is this. And right now um, I'm working on a project uh, in the whatever subway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I do, do I weave in a little bit more passion into 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 that statement, or do I stick with more of a hum, humble humble tone? You know, given that a lot of my future classmates who have done a lot of their own amazing things, whereas you know I, I'm coming yeah, more. Don't don't sell. I'm going to keep saying it. Do you, yeah. you know what that means? Uh, can you elaborate, please? Don't sell means don't go in there selling them stuff. Just answer the mm, question. Okay. Don't brag. Don't sell. I'll say, I've said it before, I'll say it again, happily say it again. The interview is meant to reject people. They've already 
swallowed your story. They said, boy, this guy could function at Harvard Business School. It, he would be a plus to our class. It would be a plus to him. Now we're going to interview him and we're going to figure out whether he can actually speak English, which apparently is the case. And the second filter is whether you'd want to sit next to him or you'd want to listen to him in class. That's what's at stake. Yeah, so it's more important that I come off likable, like a, like everybody's best friend in the class. Uh, you just come off as normal. Okay. As not a problem. You see, even that answer that I come off as likable and everybody's best friend, in the back of your mind, you were selling. Mm. You get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give it straight then, I suppose. Yes, right. Okay, here's a hard question. It's sometimes the first question. <clears throat> hey there, hi there. Could you just uh, walk me through your resume? Um, yeah, sure. So I graduated from the University of Auckland with a Bachelor's of Engineering, and I followed that up with a Master's. And following that degree, I realized that I really enjoyed teamwork. So I decided to um, join a large global company called Acom. They are Fortune 500 company, $20, $20 billion dollars in let me, revenue. Let me, let, me, let me just interrupt here. You didn't join them because you like teamwork. Okay. N nobody joins a place because they like teamwork. They join a place because they like what they're doing. They like the people. They like the salary. It's, it's part of their, you know, what they've trained to do. All right. Yeah. Just be careful. You're a natural bullshitter. It's, it's, it might do you well in the rest of your life, but it could get you into real trouble in this little exercise. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll rehash that. I joined yeah. Acom because I said it's a global company with good reach into global projects. So that was, that was backed up in my first year where I was exposed to projects across Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, where I worked on both the Riyadh Metro as well as a geothermal plant in the rural areas of Indonesia. So that provided me with a very strong foundation in geotechnical engineering, which is an offshoot of civil engineering. And from there, I was able, was able to use that as a strong launching pad for my career. Okay. It's mildly garbled, but that's acceptable. What, what, what was it like working in Riyadh? I didn't actually go to Riyadh myself, but the work I, I did was based, in, based out of Auckland. So they sent back a lot of these requests from the ACOM Riyadh office. And I worked on the models there. And I liaised a lot with the construction and design team based out of Riyadh. Okay. Uh, could you tell me what you're doing now? What you're working right on? Now. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right now. now. Right now I'm working uh, on, on the Waterloo station. It's part of the Sydney Metro. So the work that includes a lot of design work, a lot of project management. Okay, this, uh, are you uh, operating remotely or mixed or what? So no, I am working on site. I, I, I am required to show an on site presence as required, but a lot of the work does, does is, is computer work, um, designing, sitting down in meetings, especially during the COVID lockdowns. We've had to do a lot of teams meeting to discuss a lot of the ongoing side issues because we are in the middle of construction now. So um, as you would realize there, there are a lot of construction issues which creep up on an on a, on a immediate basis. All right. Just make sure you're always answering the question. You have a habit of just drifting into your general story. Uh, it's something to keep an, an eye on. That answer would be, would be a low pass. Yeah. Uh, do you get a chance to manage people? On small projects, small to medium projects, I do act as a project manager. So that requires me. Well, give me an uh, example of that. So on a separate project where I, I am managing a, a project, I am required to liaise with graduate engineers as well as more senior directors, engineering all technical technical ex experts. What what project? I'm sorry. What project is this? It's a it's a no name project. If I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, it's 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 a it's a pipeline in, in in Sydney. 
Is that, does that help? Is it is it worthwhile stating the name? It's a really small project. It's all small and medium sized projects, the ones which I actually manage myself. Yeah, it's worth saying the name. Do you want to know why? Uh, why? Because we're applying to Harvard Business School, and the name counts. Right. So it's for the Shell Harbor Wastewater Treatment Plant. So yeah, that's that great. Okay. It's a smallish project for the Shell Harbor Water Treatment Plant. They'd be interested in knowing that. And what, what role do you play? I'm the project manager on that. So what, what happens is that I pull together all the How, technical what, what does that mean? Yeah. How many people do you manage? Well, it, it ranges as, as the project progresses, but anywhere between two to six. Good. And if I ask those people what kind of manager you are, what would they say? Well, I hope they'd say that I'm a, I'm a great manager, but um, I, I believe that I'm a flexible and adaptive manager. So for example, when I am managing more senior engineers on the project, those with 20, 30 years of experience, I tend to be more hands-off. But for um, those graduate engineers with less than two or three years yeah, of experience- Yeah, what would they say? Yeah, those, those are the ones you're really managing. The other people, you're just kind of staying out of their way. Yeah, exactly. So I, I hope that I, um, I, I, they, they say that I'm, I'm a mentor and uh, I'd be there to guide that. And I do provide a more of a hands-on, hand-holding experience for them because, you know, they may not know the ropes. And I like to think you're, of myself. You're, sound, you're sounding like, uh, you know, this, this actually doesn't happen. I'm making this up. What would they actually say based on things that have happened? Well, uh, I mean, I, I do provide a lot of ongoing technical advice to them. Well, and... that, they would say that... Uh, you know, Jeremy is around a lot given the nature of the project. So, you know, he's, he's both working with us and he's managing us, if, or what, if, if that's accurate. That know? is true, yeah. And, you know, and he's called upon, you know, as a manager, one of the reasons he's effective is uh, he kind of uh, stays out of things until he's needed. So he's not over managing, you know. And one of the things I've noticed is that he's able to manage uh, different situations in different ways. You know, sometimes if, if we're behind and there's a crisis, he can be, you know, quite forceful in a good way and, and, you know, just alert us to what's going on. But under normal circumstances, he's uh, very even keeled, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I think I uh, just need a bit of polish, but, yeah, that's, yeah you, that's a lot. Well, you need the right attitude and a little bit of polish. And, you know, this may sound crazy, but just Google the word management and find some article that gives you a lot of ways to talk about managing. Especially one from Harvard Business Review or something along not, those just lines. Not necessarily, just general terms. Uh, the, the, the Harvard attitude toward management is managers should be able to manage different people in different ways. So that's a touchstone for any answer about management. It may come up in different ways, but that is the basic thing they're looking for. Yeah, I think that's, um, it's a little bit hard for me to, I, I need to still find the line on where, how I can sort of say that, you know, graduate A thinks very highly of me without blowing my, without starting to, 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 to brag, like without bragging and something too, too boastful. Yeah. You don't need to find a way. Don't do it. I, I may have said this 15 minutes ago. The purpose of this interview is to flunk people. It's not to find superstars. Put yourself in their shoes. They're interviewing 10 people and they've got to flunk two or three. And, and all 10 people are, you know, pretty, accomplished like you that you know that's hard so they're almost rooting for you to screw up because they go okay this guy's a screw up he's out i don't have to you know and and i feel good about it you know i don't have to make i don't have to flip a coin i don't want to do that that's true yeah you're, you're trying to you're a you're a show off man and you know there's other words for that. You know, you're highly accomplished, you're passionate, you're aggressive. Those are all great qualities. 
not in this interview. Got it? Yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, what's the... Uh, tell me how you joined uh, ACOM. Why did you do that? So I joined ACOM after my master's degree as I was um, looking for a, a large company to, to work with, one with global exposure and ACOM being a Fortune 500 company um, with a large wide international presence suited that profile perfectly. Okay, so that's the, that's the macro reason. And then how did they get on your radar or vice versa there? So in Auckland, New Zealand, there, there are only a, a, a handful of companies which meet such an international profile. Acom was one of the biggest, and that's why I went for them. And I did have a few well, backups. Did you, but... uh, did you write them a letter, or did they recruit on campus? Or how, how did it happen? So I reached out to the geotechnical manager um, directly myself, sent, sent an email, sent a manager. I think that's pretty common for, for Auckland, New Zealand. And they so happened to be looking to recruit at that time. So I, I managed to hook myself up with an interview with both her and, and another technical, a really technical engineer. And I was able to sell myself there sufficiently enough to get the job. Good. Why do you think they hired you? I, I like to think that I'm quite likable. Um, <laughs> But on, on a more professional front, I think that I'm quite academically and professionally ad adept in terms of civil engineering skills, technical skills. And I feel that I can... that, Yeah, I'm sure you're likable and I'm sure you're well-educated. Was there something they were looking for? Mm, I don't in think terms so, of to be honest. sub skills or, you know, they say, you know, we're actually looking for a guy we're going to send. We, we've got a project in, uh, you know, the South Pole, so... A lot of people don't want to go there. So or was it something like that? Or, Well, I've got an honest answer for you. The honest answer is probably, you know, they're just looking for someone to send out a site to do some hard yards. But um, I'm sorry, what did you just say? I, I didn't understand that. Hard yards. So someone just to pull, pull, pull the long hours, do some hard work on, on the field and, and pull some, um, do a lot of modeling and, and some of the grunt work. In the, uh, okay, the hard work I understand it was the modeling part of the job. So modeling, yeah. So we're required to do a lot of this programming called finite element modeling. So that's chucking all the salt and all the structures into a 2D analysis program where we then look into how the So that's the almost structure. a legal requirement, right? A legal requirement? Yeah, yeah. I mean, almost I think that up legal, on... it's almost a legal requirement. Or yeah. It possibly is. Or yeah, I think just... being a standard operating procedure in that industry. Yeah, 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 it is, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I didn't have that skill. I mean, I didn't have too much skill in that before joining the company, but I am a fast learner and I did pick it up pretty quickly and was able to use it to leverage a lot of my abilities in, in my first career and also in, in the subsequent. Well, why do you think they hired you given that the, one of the requirements you, 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 were, uh, you would need to learn on the job? Um, well, I, I was able to demonstrate that I was a fast learner and I was very motivated and a hard worker as well. Um, and that was demonstrated you with were my... before you got hired. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in university, like just showing that I, I squeezed a four year program into three years. And I, I also did a master's, uh, master's engineering and it, okay, it was all good fully answer. funded. They were, they were impressed by the fact I did my undergraduate degree in three years. They viewed that as the kind of person they're looking for who could, you know, learn things quickly because there was a lot of things I had to learn on the job. And they were impressed with the master's degree. I think that was another reason they hired me. I also had the uh, engineering skills they were looking for and, and what I didn't have, I could learn quickly. Uh, and and, and uh, so th th those were, you know, half of the reasons and, and uh, but what, 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 what was the corporate culture as you interpreted it in the, you know, during the interview and in the first you know, six months? Well, surprisingly, um, given that it is a global company, I would have expected a lot more bureaucracy and a lot more you know, corporate leadership. But in New Zealand and, 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 and also in Australia, it was a lot more flatline where um, I did feel comfortable talking to 
a lot of the directors in the, in the company. And I, I think that helped me, you know, gave me a lot of confidence. Yeah, it was a flat and, culture and I, I kind of fit in. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I think those were the reasons they hired me. What was unexpected during the first six months? It's one of their favorite questions. The most unexpected thing was um, how, I'm not sure how to put this, but basically I thought it would be a, even a lot more a lot more work, but uh, I felt that I, I, I brought with me a, a really hard working ethic to the company and, and that, and I, I was able to meet the requirements of the job as easily as I thought well, it would be. You, 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 you. What's the question you think you're answering? Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm just trying to say that, uh, man. Uh, that, that 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 it wasn't okay, as hard let, as I let's, thought let's it'd be. Let's go back. What was unexpected? Okay, the first six months of the job, and you could say they're looking for something like. Uh, what was unexpected was uh, that I had to do that. I was spending a lot of time in the field or that I was operating heavy machinery, or that the guys I were working with uh, came, they were, there was a large cohort of people who came from wherever, you know, Indonesia. Th those, are, those are things that are unexpected. So with that in mind, what's the answer? The most unexpected thing was the um, the amount of projects I was able to work on and uh, in terms of being able to be exposed to both Saudi Arabia and Indonesia, I didn't think I would be exposed to those projects at such a, at so early in my career. I thought I'd have to be more of a senior level before I worked on some of these projects. Okay, that's a, that's an acceptable answer. It's a small brag. But what was unexpected was how many projects you get exposed to in a quick way. Uh, I thought I'd be on one project, but I was, uh, was around a lot. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it, actually. Oh. You've got to be able to answer that for every job at, at uh, ACOM, Babbage, and WSP. Uh, I mean, th th there's just standard questions they ask. So then, then they say, OK, tell me about your decision to join Babbage. So after three and a half years at ACOM, I, I didn't want to have a feel for the local, the local engineering industry, and I decided to join a local firm called Babbage Consultants. It also helped that they offered a very lucrative pay rise in 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 terms of that, and I also offered. And how did two... this come about? Look, the fact that they're paying more is something that they'll respect. The first thing you said didn't make sense. Working, working for a local firm. I, I didn't want to have a more. Is it hands. is it Acom a local firm? Acom's international, uh, headquartered out of LA, Los Angeles, with um, offices across the world. Whereas Babbage is 100% New Zealand owned, operated, and the bulk okay, of their work. Okay, so uh, was that really something you cared about? I mean, was that going to affect you? I mean, I didn't want to have a feel for, you know, uh, uh, for what, 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 what life was like outside big corporate, um, just to see whether it's, it was something which suited me. Because I thought at that time I'd have a more hands on and I'd be able to um, work in more with the clients, work in more of the subcontractors. But at the end of the day, it was a little bit more slow paced and I didn't want to okay, be more. Let's, let's forget about the end of the day. Let's, we're just dealing with the beginning of the day here. You, you really need to have a clear answer as to why you joined Babbage. How, how did it come about? Did, were you solicited? Did, you, did a friend work there? Did they have a, 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 you know, an ad? Uh, 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 what, 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 how did it happen? Well, shortly put, I was um, hit hunted on LinkedIn by a recruiter where, we, where he first, uh, well, by a few actually, so I, I ended up shortlisting a couple of companies to move out of. Both of them were both New Zealand owned. Okay, so the question is, how did you get to Babbage? You go, a recruiter contacted me through LinkedIn. Yeah. That's yeah. the answer. Yeah, so, and then, okay. and then they'll say, what did he say? 
yeah, so basically a recruiter hired me out of, um, contacted me and headhunted me out of LinkedIn. And they offered me a, a, a salary, which I could not turn away. And I decided to accept so one it. One of the things they offered was a, w right off the bat was, a, you know, a uh, whatever, 40% or 80% salary increase. So they really got my attention. But what else? What was your diligence? That's that's what's also in their mind. How does this guy make decisions? Well, personally, like, okay, look, eighty uh, percent of the the move, the reason why I moved was because of the money. It was forty percent increase, and in it. it was quite substantial and something which. Okay, it was well. Uh, 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 the way I got to Babbage was a headhunter contacted me through LinkedIn, and it, he, the, he was offering a forty percent. Uh, salary rise. So that really got my attention. And then, okay, that, that, that's fine. And then they want to know, well, what, what, what else did you do? Did you go visit? Did you meet them? What was attractive about it or whatever? You've got to be able to lay that out. Well, the manager at Babbage actually tried to recruit me a year earlier, which I, I did entertain for a bit. And that interaction I had with that manager was was quite positive, and we did maintain that relationship over the over the previous year. Good. Well, how come you didn't take the job then? Um, at that point, I thought that still I still had a lot to gain from Acom in terms of career progression and uh, projects which I was working on. But over the over that year, I did get a new manager at Acom, and there was a push factor involved in that. I didn't really appreciate the way he was managing, which, which became more. Yeah, down okay. To... A couple of things happened. I got, you know, uh, one, one big factor was that I got a different manager at, at uh, ACOM, and uh, I didn't have as warm a relationship as I had. So when Babbage came back the second time, uh, I, I was a lot more attentive to what they were saying. Yeah. Bang on. And they came back with a bigger offer as well, you know, and money talks. Yeah, don't, don't say that to Harvard Business School. It's something they're quite aware of. Uh, you could say that the, 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 they, they offered me a 40% increase and that was, that was very attractive. And then, then, I, then I, so that got, I, I was real interested. And the next thing I did was go over there, meet with the guys, or what, what, what actually happened? Yeah, I had a few coffees and, and beers after work with the manager and the um, one of the business development managers. And we, we really broke a, we, we struck a chord in terms of building rapport and just having that open line of communication. They were really easygoing and they were nice to communicate Good. Okay, with. Okay, that's the perfect answer, okay? What was unexpected once you got there? Well, what was unexpected was how much of a laid back culture it was. I mean, it was awesome if that's what um, one wanted from a career, you know, being able to coast and being able to enjoy um, life uh, or enjoy their work. But you're, boy, you're, you've got to uh, drink the Kool-Aid, man. You've got to answer these questions without digressing into buddy, buddy talk. Okay. You have to, you have to sound conversational, but this is a mildly formal occasion. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's business. So if the question was, what was unexpected when you got there? You, you might say, well, you, you might say what was, what was unexpected was that it was a, a flat arrangement and um, either was it a case that they didn't have much work or they're just laid back or what what do you think the the truth is so as a smaller company they had only an outreach for smaller projects and those projects tended to be more repetitive and the culture was one which was more laid back as well and it was a lot more slower okay, pace I, I, I would go with what was unexpected was that uh, that I hadn't realized at first is that smaller companies often get smaller projects that are repetitive. So that was a little disappointing. Is that accurate? 
exactly. Yeah, um, it was a lot more repetitive, and uh, the, in terms of technical ability, like I didn't, I wasn't like stretching myself as much, and I was just you know doing a lot of the rinsing and repeating of the same engineering solutions. Okay, which so after, that's a bummer. So after that sunk in, what did you do? Well, after that, I I started looking again for 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 a job, and I and I knew what worked for me, which was a large multinational consulting firm. So that in that way, I reached out back to Acom in Sydney. I reached out to WSP in Sydney and another company in Sydney, and I did receive three offers from these companies, the ones which I did reach out to. Well, how did you reach out? Did you was this LinkedIn or did a head, headhunter still? Did you go back to your old headhunter or what? Uh, no, new, new recruiter for WSP. So I actually reached out to the WSP New Zealand office and they hooked me up with someone from Australia. So it involved me going to the WSP office, um, having a video conference with them. And after one interview, they really liked me and they, they offered me a role as a senior engineer. Good. At, ACOM, at ACOM and other companies that I did have um, networks for my previous job and I had a good reputation from, from, from my colleagues there, which, which assisted. Okay, here here's... Uh, very often what they'll do is they'll take one project and they'll really dig down on it. Uh, so let's talk about the, tell me what you're doing with the Sydney Metro project. So in Sydney Metro, we, I've been involved in the design and the construction phase. So the work I do there is a lot more technical and I do a lot of that finite element modeling which i was describing earlier on and it also requires well, a lot back of... up a step and tell me what i'd be happy to answer that w, wsp global is in charge with the design and building of a new metro station or is that accurate or what's yeah, the accurate that, version of that they are acting as the engineering consultants for a tier one contractor who are okay. doing the design and con, con Construct. Yeah. Okay. So, how 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 long is this project, and when when did you join? Well, when I joined WSP in 2019, this was actually the first project which I was chucked on, and I have been managing it um, ever since. And we are in the middle of construction now. So, I was involved pre-construction during the design phase. So, it I was liaising a lot of structural engineers, the construction managers. Um, and while the scope has changed and evolved over time from the design to construction, I have remained a geotechnical How long have you been working on this project? You've, what you need is an answer. This is, I've been on this project for X months. The project is the design and construction of the Sydney, whatever it is. And my role is to do this, this, and this. And then you, sh you should also be able to uh, talk about what kind of manager you are or what the management challenges are. And like I said, the key thing to do in that situation is to say that uh, I manage different people in different ways and have examples of that. Okay. Uh, last question here. This comes up. Who, who's the best manager you ever worked for? The best manager I've worked for was my first one in the ACOM. She really prioritized um, my career development and seeing it as she identified me as, as someone who was a hard worker, she really um, um, allowed that to flourish in terms of putting me into exciting projects and projects where it really stretched me Put, required me to think creatively and really step out of my comfort zone. And I really appreciate it that. And um, yeah, to this day, I can't thank her enough because that's okay, impacted. Yeah. Here's another about. question. I, I noticed you're, you're a very accomplished competitive ultimate Frisbee player in international contests. What, what, what would your team members, do, do you manage the, a team? Well, it's more of a, again, it's a, it's very flat structured, you know, everybody mm -hmm. gets a, a say in everything. Um, I like to think that I facilitate a lot of the discussions and um, I, I am a, a very good team member. So for example, I, I, I prioritize communication, especially when we're all on a pitch, as I'll be always on the sidelines shouting at my teammates, giving them advice, discussion, um, directions and information for them to process. And yeah, you go, you know, Frisbee is a kind of shouty game and, uh, 
it, to the extent that I manage the team, it does involve a lot of uh, y yelling what I think is correct. So it's a special kind of management. It might not work in a professional setting, <laughs> although, although you'd be surprised. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, we, we do shout at each other, especially as um, situations become quite heated. But we, again, you know, after the end of the after the end of the game, when we all cool down, we all yeah, of all, course, all... they don't care about that. That's normal. They want to know what kind of manager you are in this setting, and they expect a serious answer. Okay, I'm yeah. going to send you a list of um, reports. Hey, Sandy, I just had my interview. And this is what they asked, all right? So that'll give you an example of how the interview goes. Uh, and do me a favor and write me one of them reports, okay? After we'll do, definitely, yeah. Okay. And, and let me know how, it, and, and then send me the questions they actually ask you, okay? You're gonna do fine, you got a lot going for you, okay? If you have any, you know, random question, in the course of preparing, just send me an email. Will do, will do. Okay, Jeremy, good talking to you. And uh, hope to see you here next year. A lot of Frisbee in uh, Harvard Business School. Hope so. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks, Sandy.